Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shira and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015. To discuss the issue, I have with me Mr. Owen Srivastava, former BIS officer, and Mr. Anil Jory, CEO, NAB, CB. First, the headlines. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 seeks to recognize institutions engaged in standardization. The bill also seeks to create investor-friendly standardization framework. Counterfeit hallmarks to attract punishable with one-year jail. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 seeks to recognize and accredit any institution in India or outside which is engaged in standardization. The existing law does not allow this liberty to the Bureau of Indian Standards. Once the proposed bill is approved by Parliament, it has the potential to revamp the entire standardization process currently being followed. The bill allows foreign and Indian entities other than the Bureau of Standards to be recognized as the standardizing authority. This being done to create an investor-friendly regulatory framework which is in tune with the global standards. The proposed changes also seek to protect the interests of the consumers. These amendments were very, very much required and they are long overdue. In fact, these things have been brought in the way of the Act at least 10 to 15 years back. We have been talking about these things for the last 15 years. So whatever they are doing, of course it is late, but it is most welcome. And this will help the consumer and consumer protection. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 seeks to empower central government to authorize agencies with necessary accreditation to access conformity according to Indian standards. It enables the government to include more products, systems and services in the ambit of standardization. The bill allows multiple types of conformity assessment schemes in sync with global needs. It also enables mandatory hallmarking of precious metal articles. Hallmarking, it is nothing but a purity of PCS metal marking on the ornament or PCS material. So if it is, uh, this amendment comes and it is uh, given in our BIS Act, then uh, naturally the, this will be compulsory for uh, all jewelers for to um, uh, take their material to BIA government recognized laboratory to get the hallmark on their jewellery and the consumer will, be, will not be cheated anymore. The bill empowers central government and the Bureau of Indian Standards to improve quality of products and services. It will also improve enforcement of Indian standards. The bill repeals the Bureau of Indian Standards Act as the Act doesn't address future challenges in the area. Even though BIS represents India in various international bodies, it is still not formally recognized as the National Standards Body of India. Bureau of National Standards Law was brought up for the harmonious development of the activities of standardization, marking and quality certification of goods and processes. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 replaces the Bureau of Indian Standards Act 1986. The bill aims to include more products under the ambit of standardization. The bill also includes the hallmarking of precious metals and recall of substandard products with cameraman Rajesh Agarwal, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. The proposed bill seeks mandatory certification regime aimed at protecting health and safety of the consumer and the environment. Mr. Jory, straight away, first to you. What is it that you do not agree with as far as the bill is concerned? Uh, my biggest problem uh, with this bill is that it seeks to place several activities into a single place, which is not international best practice. Mm -hmm. And nowhere in the world a national standards body is utilized in the manner in which we, do, we are doing in India. Uh, it vests regulatory functions like market surveillance, registration, etc. It was standard setting, voluntary standard setting, which was BIS mandate and it, are, it is known as a voluntary standard setting body and nobody challenges that. It 
with uh, the function of conformity assessment, which again BIS has been doing for various years. Now, in addition, it vests the function of accreditation, which is a direct conflict of interest. How is that a conflict of interest? A body which provides a service, if it's a testing service or it's a certification service, or even, for example, a standard setting service, cannot accredit other bodies for the same. It's conflict of interest, internationally recognized. Okay. And in nowhere, an accreditation body can be certification body. Why do you think this has been brought in? The entire idea of BIS accrediting and allowing other certification agencies or other standardization agencies to be allowed while BIS, BIS continues. Why do you think there was a need to get this into the bill, the new legal framework? See, what was needed to be got into the bill was the ability to allow other certification bodies to certify against Indian standards, which today's bill, today's act does not permit. Mm -hmm. It's only BIS which can certify against Indian standards. Mm -hmm. It was a very restrictive clause. To that extent, it's a welcome change that this bill opens up certification against Indian standards. Mm. But to say that BIS will accredit bodies, now accreditation is a term, internationally understood term in a particular fashion. Uh, it's Relating not, to certain <clears throat> goods, some other authority will be created. Who will be the standardizing authority? And BIS will merely accredit that organization, if I've understood it correctly. No, uh, there are two parts to it. If you look at the read through the bill, there is accreditation of standards bodies, <coughs> which is internationally not called accreditation, but fine. And there is accreditation of conformity assessment bodies. Mm -hmm. There are two things separate. Correct. There are two separate clauses. Okay. Now, accreditation of conformity assessment bodies is a direct conflict of interest because BIS itself is a conformity assessment body. So mm -hmm. it cannot accredit. Same would apply really to standards also. That if you are doing a service, you are developing standards, you are a standards body yourself, then you can use the term recognize but not accredit. Accredit is something else. Why accredit was is there third a party. need? Why was there a need to insert this. There must be a purpose behind the government doing this. Uh, there has to be some sort of an explanation. Have you been able to understand why? No, I have not been able to understand because while I see the need for having multiple certification bodies to do certification against Indian standards, which we have been as an organization pushing for for last several years, while I see the need for BIS to recognize other standards mm -hmm. and other standards bodies, I do not see the need for inserting function of accreditation, which is defined. I'll get you in, sir. Why do you think this has been inserted? <clears throat> yeah, it is to create a competitive environment mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. the, what I feel personally, mm -hmm. that it has been included like it. But one thing must ensure by the government, the organization which can be given this kind of job must have the technical competencies mm -hmm. to handle this kind of job having so much branch offices all over the India to tackle all these situations. And technical competence, that is the more important, which we do not find very good, particularly for product certification, mm -hmm. where we have outsourced this activity to somebody else and they have not performed well. This, So th that's why you think this has been inserted. Now I'll yeah. give you a completely new scenario. Just a complete, and um, the way the... Uh, uh, this country is opening up. There's going to be a lot of transfer of technology that is going to be coming in. Now, there are going to be technologies which India has probably never dealt with or has not understood yet or has not yet mastered yet. So, standardizing that may not be that easy. So, if there is a transfer of technology, let's say, in defense sector, is it possible for BIS to accredit that foreign agency which is uh, producing a particular specialized kind of defense equipment for Indian need through transfer of technology. And that entity then goes on to become the standardizing authority. Is it possible through this bill or not? So you. Sir, I would like to tell you, the first of all, the product certification scheme of BIS is, <coughs> in fact, uh, it is against an Indian standard produced by in India or any other standard adopted by BIS which has been formulated by the other countries. Mm -hmm. In case any other organization will given this kind of the job, 
they have to do the certification as per the Indian standard, the methodology. Is it possible or not? No, they cannot use their own standard. They have to follow the Indian standard fully, 100%. Even if they are accredited? So, I'll get you in, sir. Is that possible or not? See, uh, as an accreditation body, I come from an accreditation body. Correct, correct. We are doing accreditation. We are part of an international system. We are accreditation is equivalent worldwide, whatever equivalences are needed. For an accreditation body, it is possible to accredit an organization to certify against any standard. Correct. So as far as I am concerned, we are accrediting for global gap standard, for example. We have mm. accredited two certification bodies in India mm. for global gap standard, which mm. is a private standard accepted worldwide. Mm -hmm. So we do not have a limitation mm -hmm. as an accreditation body to accredit certification bodies and inspection bodies and laboratories Correct. to certify against or inspect or test as per any standard around the world. Correct. BIS Act did have that limitation that BIS can only certify against BIS standards or even if they outsource, as they say, yes. it will be only against Indian standards. Against <clears throat> so, but, but, but in BIS Act, earlier also there was a provision, now it's very much more explicit that you can recognize other standards. So if there is an other, uh, standard in another country and BIS recognizes it, yes, of it, is possible, it is possible to certify against those standards as well. So that's possible? Yeah, it's possible. That is possible. Yes. So, but it will not be a certain technology. As an accreditation right. body, yes, it's absolutely possible. As BIS, in the light of the fact that the, the, there's a provision for recognizing other standards, it is possible to recognize other standards and then have certification. And that's the new thing that has happened. That <clears throat> yes. This bill allows that kind of dynamism. Is that correct? Have I understood it correctly? Uh, well, if you ask me, the provision of recognition of other standards was already there in the Act. So but I don't not think... not as directly or clearly as... Oh, it was as direct as... Uh, as possible. As, as okay. needed, actually. As needed. Time for a short break. Coming up, the bill empowers the Bureau to search and seize for violation of standards. Welcome back. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 empowers the Bureau with powers to search and seize equipment relating to violation of standards. Violation of the proposed law will now attract an imprisonment of one year and fine up to one year of production cost. The bill also allows compounding of offences. The government felt that the existing law lacks teeth to deter violations of standards. As the Bureau of Indian Standards Law does not provide for recall of substandard ISI marked products, hallmarking of precious metal articles, compounding of offences. In order to strengthen the Bureau of Standards, it has been vested with powers to act in various situations of violations. Bureau of Indian Standard is the national standardization body. They are making the standard. And if anybody is using our mark or the conformity assessment against that standard, the sole authority is the Bureau of Indian Standards. Now, if the government wanted to extend the sphere and wanted to give this activity to other organizations, it is a welcome decision. The objective of the proposed legislation is to prevent misuse of standard mark in various activities. The bill empowers officers to search and seize any entity that reproduces the standards will be punished with a fine up to 5 lakh rupees. Any entity caught using counterfeit hallmarks will be punished with imprisonment of up to one year with fine. Any person caught selling items without standards acquired from the Bureau will be punished with imprisonment up to two years and fine. The bill provides for compounding of offences. The bill provides for recall of those products which have standard mark but do not conform to relevant Indian standards. I think it is very consumer friendly and uh, giving lots of powers to the government because all unscrupulous, unfair trade practices can be curtailed and can be curbed. Otherwise, the government was feeling handicapped because they did not have the legal powers to prosecute the unfair people. According to the bill, the Bureau will perform its function through a governing council. The governing council will consist of a president and other members. 
If the bill finds favor with the parliament, it is likely to promote a culture of quality products and services which would lead to consumer welfare. The government attempted to amend the Bureau of Standards Act 1986 in 2012, which was referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee and could not be passed. The Bureau of Indian Standards Bill 2015 enables the standardization of products, services and systems. Experts believe the inclusion of services and systems are a good step, as it would lead to consumer welfare. With cameraman Rajesh Agarwal, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. The proposed bill aims to keep up with mushrooming goods and services and bring in standardization. The, 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 the change that you were talking about, sir, is Section 14. Now, what does Section 14 actually say? Okay, you. Section 14 actually is, to me, the most significant uh, change made in this uh, bill is Section 14, Amendment of Section 14. Section 14 earlier was very restrictive. Uh, it, it extended only to goods. It did not allow products which were not figuring in Industrial Development Regulation Act to be put under mandatory regime. For example, toys we were unable to do because that was a restriction. It restricted the what we call the uh, kinds of conformity assessment procedures could, which could be specified. It only prescribed BIS certification. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, uh, amendment of Section 14 and now it's I think Section 16 now in this current bill is the most significant change which will allow government to get into various to, kinds of to products notify not services. only products but services, services processes processes so that is widening the ambit which is needed mm -hmm. uh, also the idea that uh, you can uh, prescribe variety of conformity assessment procedures including sometimes self declaration which is a very growing concept in west mm -hmm. although not so suitable to india right now but if you are looking at future yes that's another option and third, the, the uh, freedom to, to uh, recognize other agencies to do certification, not, not only BIS. That's to the me, to me, this major is, These are yes. major changes major in the bill. And second major change to me would be the, on the compounding, compounding the and uh, uh, search and seizure was already there, but mm. the fines were low, the uh. punishment was hardly there. That has uh, another significant on the, change. On the, on the penal provisions that have been given, you've also been given uh, uh, virtual rights of some sort of a civil court. Not exactly expressly said that, yes. but those powers have been given to you through this bill. Yes. Not exactly yes. that, but and also the amount of power, power to recall, was it there before? No. Power it to was recall not was not there. It then was not 10 there. times, if the amount of... Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, damage is not, can't be assessed, then yes. the bill specifically says one year. it is 10 times the production of one year. One year of the previous year. Pre previous year. Yes. Now, that's a substantial deterrent. Do you, do you think so? Yeah, definitely it is a welcome step. I will only say that it was not earlier. Earlier, there were the, the penalties were very nominal. That is the imprisonment of one year and the penalty up to 50,000. What 50,000 means mm -hmm. as on today. Mm -hmm. And this was framed sometime in when the certification was just started mm -hmm. in BIS. Till then it was not revised. Even at that, at that time when the BIS Act 1986 came, at that time it was not revised. Now it has been considered and revised because the people are not afraid of, they are misusing and then the on behalf of the court are when directed by the court, they are putting the money, okay, fine, I have deposited the penalty. So but there was now no deterrence. The, yeah. But now the compounding, it is a welcome step. BIS is going to save a lot of time and manpower. On both the aspects, we will save. I, I just have two more issues uh, yeah. that I want to um, find out. The, you have also been empowered to raise your own funds. That's a new thing. That has yes. been added to BIS, which essentially means the government will allow you to raise money for creating your own infrastructure and they will stand guarantee for it. Which means for you to grow, they have also created a pathway so that you can grow the way you want to. That's a reasonable amount of financial autonomy. Is that so or not? No, I fully agree with it. And that is a definitely a welcome step. 
that has been considered by the government and uh, definitely BIS will progress because many times there are handicaps that whether we should proceed or not, whether it will be beneficial or not. When, but when we will earn our own, then we will have a freedom to spend money right. as we want. Uh, uh, how do you, why do you disagree with this? Well, BIS is today, what, 300 crore organization? It has plenty of money today. Mm -hmm. If it wants to grow, it can spend that money. To me, but 300 crores is not sufficient to penetrate right down to block level. Uh, That's not sufficient. Yes. And the government can't give you 5,000, 10,000 crores in one go to have the infrastructure all across the country. Government has not been supporting BIS financially for several years today. Several if I remember years. right, uh, we turned the corner in 1982 Correct. or so. So, government is not supporting uh, uh, financially supporting BIS at all. Doesn't need to. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing. Doesn't need to. I would rather say that BIS ought to have been given more freedom than it has today. Given that it's a self-sustaining body earning for itself, give it freedom. Uh -huh. That which has is, been which, given. Which has, which has not, not really been done. No. Well, the financial autonomy to uh, move ahead the way... Every we, we want. Still, still yes. everything requires approval of the government. There are various provisions we say with the previous approval of government. I would have, I would have welcomed uh, more freedom to BIS to act on its own and go ahead without government uh, being involved. So if it does, I mean, with the liberty that is given, how, what is the volume of money that you see now uh, BIS being able to handle in, let's say, coming 5-10 years, any insight? From a 300 company, crore uh, uh, organization, where do you think it going? If there is an increase in mandatory regime, which is likely to be, that, that's the purpose of uh, one of the purposes of uh, amending the act. There's going to be more mandatory uh, regulation, so to say, uh, involving BIS. Not all of it product certification, but in variety of ways. It's certainly going to add to the income of uh, BIS. How many times do you see it growing? Uh, uh, frankly, I'm not a financier. Sir, person. any intake, uh, no. any input on, uh, uh, sorry, any input on the growth that BIS could... Sir, it expect. is very difficult to assess it right now. But uh, only one thing I can tell you that BIS can utilize this money in the way they want. And definitely for the consumer, they can think it better for consumer awareness, putting for the industrial growth and technological development. They can have some kind of warranty for the country's good. All these things they are lacking behind is still today. Okay. Moving on, my colleague Dipali Pandit spoke to Satish Chand, retired additional director, General BIS, to get his point of view. Sir, do you think that the amendments in the Bureau of Indian Standards Act were required? There were certain lacuna in the sense that BIS was not having any power to recall any substandard goods having the ISI certification mark. Uh, they, the BIS was not also having any powers to uh, compound certain small uh, sort of a shortcomings or any lapses on the part of the licensee. Uh, they had to go to the court, which takes very, very long time, with the result that uh, any uh, deficient product which we find, we have to store for a long period of time as long as the court continues which was creating a lot of problems. So, uh, as I understand, the new bill will have give powers to the BS to compound certain, uh, certain lapses on the part of the license. So, what is your take on the implementation of the proposed law? Well, as I mentioned, uh, the proposed law will, will be more comprehensive than the earlier present law. Uh, we started with one scheme of certification and now in the process we found that one scheme was not enough and we have now introduced many new schemes already. So, for example, uh, there is a registration scheme. Uh, we, are, we have started the hallmarking of the precious metals also, which was not covered in the earlier standard, earlier act of BIS, which is now being covered. So, incidentally, services were also not covered in the earlier act. It was only saying goods. And now it is made, being made more comprehensive, covering the services, 
uh, goods as well as the management systems. Thank you, sirs, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV. Thank <laughs> you.